Welcome back. The next exercise, or the next application from Hot Potatoes I'm going to show you, is called J-Close. To open J-Close, we open Java Hot Pot, Java Hot Potatoes 6, the program itself. And then, once it opens up, we will click on this potato labeled J-Close. And here's our basic uh, screen. Before I get started, I'm just going to type in an, an exercise title like I did for J quiz. I'm going to call it Sample J Close with a Z. Still not sure why they have it in a Z. And then I'm going to click on File, Save Data File, give it the same name just for simplicity, and so we have everything um, together with the masher. Once we use that, I'm going to put it all in the hot potato folder over here where I have my sample J quizzes. Notice how the file format is in .jcl, that stands for .jclose, and only the jclose application will be able to open this file. Okay, now jclose is a blank filling exercise. You type in the sentences here, create gaps where you want blanks to be in place of your text, and students will have to use whatever context clues or hints you provide to figure out what is missing. Okay, so let's do a small sample to get used to the program. I'm going to type a sentence here just to show you how it works. So let's just say, uh, I am a mathematics major, just as a basic sentence. Now to tell the program what part you want to leave blank, you need to highlight the word that you want to make blank and, call, and click on Make Gap, and this will be your gap screen. Now it has the word that I highlighted here, and this is telling me what gap I'm on. If I had more gaps, I'd be able to select between them with these arrows, but they're inactive right now because I only have one gap. This is a clue that will appear as a text box that students can click on to help them figure out what the gap is. So, for right now, I'll just say, I'll write under clue, uh, this major involves numbers. The alternate word, alternate correct words for gap, that part refers to these boxes here. I could add more if I want to with these arrows. But what this is for is that, let's say I want to accept another word as the correct answer. Like, let's say uh, a student decides, well, I'm not going to type in mathematics, I'm just going to type math. Math and mathematics is arguably the same thing. So I believe it would only be fair to allow that to be um, an alternate correct word for that gap. You don't have to worry about case sensitivity. By default, since I have the word mathematics here as a correct response, a lowercase m for mathematics would also be correct. And since I put math here, lowercase, uppercase m for math would also be a correct answer. So you don't have to worry about that. You simply click close, and that's all you really need to create an exercise. To see what this looks like, we're going to click on this web here with the six in the corner, double click the hot potato folder, so we're in this folder and then click on save. No problem with it containing a space. And now we have the exercise created. We're going to click on view in browser. And this is what the exercise looks like. Here's my title, here's my sentence, and here's my gap. And of course there are many, there are four different correct answers for it. Math and mathematics, uppercase and lowercase. I type it in, I click check, and it'll say indeed that is the correct answer. Now what you might be wondering at this point is where is the clue icon? I did mention that or I did include a, qu uh, a clue in this gap and if you want to look at your gaps again without gapping anything you can click on show words over here and I specifically wrote as a clue this major involves numbers but that clue I wasn't given an option to look at that clue. To give that option for your students, you need to go to Options, Open Configuration Window, Buttons, and over here I have two options. I have a Hint button here, 
and clue button here. I'm just going to click on clue button. And over here, I can change the, the word that's on the clue button, but I believe clue is self-explanatory enough. And now when I click on close and try it again, reset and uh, replace my old quiz, there'll no, now be an option for a clue here. A student can click on it, the clue will appear, and then they'll say, oh, maybe let's try mathematics. Of course, my score was cut in half because I used a clue, but that's just another option that you can give your students in uh, jQuiz. I'm sorry, jClose. Now I can add more sentences. Uh, let's say, my name is Matthew, for instance, and I can gap this as well. Now I can navigate from one gap to the other. And notice how my clue and my alternate correct words are for each are specific for that gap. It doesn't transfer over, so there's no problem there. Now, if you're following along or if you're trying this uh, on your own, you might realize that right now I have a gap and I can't seem to type anything after this gap. Um, I can't type anything at all, and I can't move my space. I can't press the space bar. Nothing is happening. Um, I could erase. Uh, my other, my ungapped text, but I can't create any new text, and that's a bit of a problem here. Um, one way to deal with it is to first highlight everything, click on ungap all, which will get rid of all of your gaps and all of your clues, so it'll really undo the work that I just did, but I can say yes to this, and now I should have no problem with typing in new information, but that could be a bit frustrating to realize that later. Uh, what I would recommend for this uh, specific issue is not to write your text di or, or not don't work on your project directly here. Don't don't do it all here. What you want to do is actually have text in a separate Word document. Copy your text, paste it with the Control Z and Control V. I use that combination for Mac, and then then include the gaps so you don't have to worry about that bug getting in the way but that's just one way of dealing with it now another option for gapping is this button here the auto gap if you click on it and I put in a number like let's say six for instance click OK and just just say yes to this it's saying that there that it found the last um, character in the selection. They found the end of the text and of course you want to include that. It looks like it found another one. Now there is a gap automatically placed every five words. Oh, I'm sorry, every six words. I put in a six in there. Now that might not be uh, what you want to do since usually for um, these kinds of activities you're looking to get rid of specific words or specific like con content words um, and that isn't necessarily going to be, or th those words won't necessarily be organized every six words, but it's still an option. And if you want to work on these, you simply click on Show Words and navigate your gaps with the arrow keys. Okay, now that you've seen the basics of two different kinds of potatoes, I'm going to introduce you to more features of the configuration, the instructions and prompts. To get to the instructions, or the menu that allows you to manipulate the instructions of your jclose or of any um, potato, you click on Options, Open Configuration Window, and Instructions. Here you can add a subtitle to your exercise that will appear as soon as the exercise shows up, and you can also add instructions down here to help students navigate and complete whatever activity you have in mind. And as I said, this instruction portion is not a jclose only feature. This will be on any configuration window for any of the applications you use except for the masher. Now the next one, the prompts, this will be slightly different depending on what application you are using since they don't all have the same prompts. But the idea on how to use it is the same. The description of what the text is for 
or a condition will appear above each of these text boxes. And within each text box is a message that will appear if the user meets the above condition. Uh, for example, if the student puts in guesses or correct guesses for every single blank and then they click check, the message correct will appear and we've seen that. Uh, every hot potato application has a different set of prompts that you can manipulate. While jQuiz has more than 10, jClose only has 5 here, so it's a little easier to handle. And once you're done with everything, you can click on Close to have all of these saved for this specific project, or we can click on Save, and what it'll do is that it'll actually change all of, or it'll save all of the, um, the changes you've made for the projects as its own file. Just to clarify that last statement, I wouldn't be saving over the data file. I would be saving over the configuration settings here. Now, I would not recommend saving over this English 6 configuration file because that is the standard English uh, configuration that they give you, which has these really nice messages that all make sense for where they've been placed. So instead, if you decide to change them at all, I would recommend going into Save As and putting a different name here. For instance, um, I could call it jclose configuration. Save it. And then I can go back and open up the English 6 file in case I just want to start from the beginning again. And because the configurations are different for each program, if I'm in a program like jQuiz, for instance, jQuiz does not have um, this part that says some gaps not correct, but it does have this guesses all correct part. So if I change this at all, and then I open this configuration in jQuiz, this will be changed. It doesn't matter what I put in here, because this will not appear in the jQuiz configuration window. That is all I have to show for jClose. The next application I'm going to show you is jCross. So until then, happy cooking.